All right, guys, so it's uh, GI track time. We're going to be talking right now about GERD, gastritis, um, peptic ulcer, as well as the hiatal hernia. So really, um, everything but hiatal hernia, we're all talking about the same thing. We're talking about acid production inside your stomach. So whether it's GERD, gastritis, or peptic ulcer, we're really just talking about pretty much the same thing here. So let's get into it real quick. So the normal anatomy physiology of your stomach, when we swallow something down our esophagus, it goes through a sphincter muscle called your esophageal, um, I think it's esophageal gastric sphincter muscle. Basically your esophageal stomach little muscle that kind of clamps off. You also have another muscle right here that does the same thing. So whenever you get like, let's say a patient on a lap band surgery, the lap band squeezes these two portions to make you feel like you're full. Kind of interesting, huh? Okay, anyways. <laughs> Really, whether you're talking about gastritis, whether you're talking about um, gastroesophageal reflux, GERD, or whether you're talking about peptic ulcer, we're really just talking about the same thing, really. Too much acid production inside the stomach. But where is the acid production um, at, as well as what happens if the progression of that acid production is too much? is where we start differentiating things. So if your acid production starts to creep up your GI tract and starts to, let's say, burn away at your esophagus here, we start getting heartburn. And this is called our GERD, your gastroesophageal reflux disease. So we start getting heartburn, especially after we drink coffee, especially after we eat like harsh meats, especially after, let's say we smoke, um, or we have too much caffeine. We get heartburn and your patients will suffer from this. So you have to t teach your patients mm -hmm. to uh, limit the caffeine that's going into their body, L limit the coffee limit the alcohol because this GERD is going to give their heartburn, pretty much heartburn, we call it heartburn. It's just a, a, a um, burning on our esophagus. So we give your patients Tums, anti-acids to really decrease and neutralize your, um, your acid production. Keep it from creeping up into the esophagus. Now, gastritis, on the other hand, gastritis is really an entire inflammation of the lining of your stomach itself. So when GERD, we're talking only about this lining of the esophagus. With gastritis, we're talking about an entire the mucous membrane of your entire stomach now is being eroded. And all that acid now is being eroded on and you have a lot of pain, too much acid production. When this acid production becomes insanely, um, let me see, too much, we get something called a peptic ulcer or basically an ulcer. Whoa. Peptic ulcer. Just fancy words for this acid has eaten away at the lining of your stomach 
and caused a hole now inside the lining of your stomach, which leads to entirely new problems of us bleeding out in the stomach, um, us having an active bleed in the actual stomach itself. So a peptic ulcer is we had too much acid production. This acid corroded the lining of your stomach and has now burned a hole. And that's what your peptic ulcer is. Now, um, what do we do to prevent these things? With GERD, we can give anti-acids. That's going to prevent the, um, the lining of our GI tract and kind of neutralize things. With gastritis, we really want to protect the lining of our stomach, okay? So our gastric parietal cells, those cells on the lining of our stomach that are producing the acid, we want to stop or we want to block. So we give your patient H2 blockers. These H2 blockers block the histamine production of basically this inflammatory response of the gastric lining itself. It's just a way to protect your stomach against ulcers itself. We also give your patients uh, what's called PPI inhibitors. PPI. It's just another means to aid in the decrease of secretions inside your GI tract. Now, PPI inhibitors work a lot longer. They are, um, it's almost like, let's say, the lantus of your insulins. Um, it's, a, it's a really long duration, like 24 hours of protection. Um, it's not going to help you in an acute situation. So let's say if you have GERD and you use a PPI inhibitor, it's not going to help you as good. Antiacids now, on the other hand, is almost like your rapid-acting insulin, we can call it, for your diabetic patients. Now, do not get confused with my analogies here, okay? Let's say your patient's having um, asthma attack. They use an albuterol inhaler because it's going to act really fast. If your patient's in an asthma attack and they use um, a steroid, it's not going to help as fast. So your patient with GERD wants that fast-acting anti-acids to immediately neutralize things. Your PPI and your H2 blockers are really like um, they act like the lantus of insulins. They act like the steroids for your respiratory tract. All they're doing is decreasing the amount of secretions made by this GI tract to prevent irritation of the gastric um, lining, as well as to prevent a peptic ulcer. Now, I include these two drugs in the pharmacology boot camp, and I really go into depth on really what they do. But, I mean, right now we're just talking about gastritis and GERD and peptic ulcer. So that's really the basics of what happens with those kind of conditions there.